Hello, everybody, and thank you for taking the time on this Monday afternoon to join us and uh, learn about cybersecurity for the rapid digital transformations of today and how you can bring this uh, into your own day's day-to-day -day practices. Um, my name is Sherman Wong. I am the Channel Account Executive here at Ingram Micro, and I'm here to support our reseller partners on developing their cybersecurity strategies. I'm just going to kick us off with a little bit of housekeeping um, so that you guys know how to utilize the tools today. Directly to the right of the view screen, you should see a questions box. This is for any questions or comments you have during the presentation, and they will all be answered and addressed uh, either during the presentation or uh, at the end when we have our Q&A period. Uh, we will have lots of time for questions, so uh, please feel free to throw in any questions you have. Also, please remember to use the box. Um, we do not have any audio from the audience that's available for today. Um, last reminder as well, this uh, will be recorded, so everybody in the audience is automatically muted and will not be unmuted. If for any reason you are having trouble with any of your audio or visual, please use the chat box. Um, and somebody from our team will help you uh, assist, or sorry, will assist you in fixing it. Uh, without further ado, let me do a quick round of introductions. With me today is Jasper Deman and Carlos Enriquez from ISA Cybersecurity. Jasper is the Director of Strategic Alliances, and Carlos is the Service Delivery Manager here at ISA. Uh, today, we are here to both tap into the, their industry expertise and the expertise of the ISA team to have a conversation around cyber threats uh, during this rise of rapid digital transformation, especially in the past six months uh, with COVID. Jasper Deman joined ISA in March of 2019 as the Director of Strategic Alliances, he is responsible for building a strong ecosystem of cybersecurity partners around ISA, including industry-leading technology vendors and world-class IT resellers. Jasper brings an extensive uh, experience of building technology partnerships in Europe and North America, working with companies ranging from the industry's largest players to exciting new startups. Carlos Enriquez joined ISA in August 2019 as the Service Delivery Manager. He is responsible for leading continuous improvement in the ISA managed service portfolio and ensuring consistent uh, customer value. Carlos brings extensive experience both from a technical perspective as a security consultant and senior management experience from the Canadian financial industry. So we wanted to start off today with a little bit of a poll question. Um, and we want to know from our audience, uh, as we're framing the context of this webinar, um, what is the mem most memorable part of working from home for you guys? Um, I know for myself, um, I had a new baby boy born March the 3rd. Um, so I've been really being able to enjoy the past six months with him, um, spending as many of my breaks uh, with him as possible. And I'd love to hear more about uh, how you guys have been taking advantage of some of the work from home perks. Uh, as the poll runs, we're going to continue to frame the webinar a little bit. Um, so for today, we're not really going to go into a conversation of digital transformation itself. Uh, there is tons of content and information out about there. But we do want to have our audience uh, keep a little bit of uh, information in mind, right? Um, so if you think about yourself, your businesses, and what you've been doing, uh, imagine what business uh, <laughs> uh, imagine what digital transformation in your business means, right? Well, we may not know exactly what's been happening with your business, but we can guarantee there are some common themes and common uh, goals that happen during rapid digital transformation. It's typically expanding, new, frequent, and very, very quick. And because of those points, um, and especially because of the past six months, the adoption and deployment rates across the industries have accelerated. Uh, so we wanted to contextualize today's topic by saying, when we deploy technology fast, we typically cut corners, and that always leads to cybersecurity risk. And that's why we've invited Carlos and Jasper here today to have a conversation with us about this. So let's start jumping into the conversation for today. Um, Carlos, Jasper, from a cybersecurity perspective, can you let us know what you have been seeing in the Canadian marketplace, uh, what changes have happened since and, uh, you know, since the beginning of COVID, um, and, you know, what ISA has been doing in this uh, rapid change in the market? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, thank you also. 
um, Sherman for moderating us today and thank you everybody who joined the call. Thank you Carlos as well for joining me here today. Um, you know on the screen you already see a couple of statistics um, kind of showing the vast impact that the pandemic has had on everybody's work style and um, I can only see Carlos and Sherman um, uh, at this point but I'm pretty sure that you know we've got a lot of people on this call which is amazing but that a lot of people will be dialing in from very similar um, experience or for a very similar situation. I'm calling you from where I live, my house. Um, and uh, a lot of people are currently working remotely. Um, in our industries, that number is going to be much higher than what you see the overall percentage in Canada right now, which is 40%, which is a massive, a massive uh, number if you think about it. Um, some people have joked that, you know, COVID has done more for digital transformation than any CIO or CEO has ever done before. Um, but with that come a lot of things that we need to keep in mind. Like we are, to your point, Sherman, we're, we're building, in most cases, permanent or semi-permanent solutions. Um, a lot of people, 77% uh, of Canadians, you know, do believe that after the pandemic has ended, whatever that means, uh, a lot of people will want to work from home still or, you know, feel most comfortable there. Um, a lot of people are using different um, uh, ways of communicating than they've ever done before. Uh, it shows here that 63% of Canadians believe that video conferencing will replace their travels. Um, I think for almost everybody on this call, that will be very relevant. Um, I'm somebody I used to be on the road or in planes a lot. And I've obviously not done that for the last six months. And these kinds of new technologies require a certain skill set and an awareness that uh, was not happening before. Um, what's something that we've seen, and I'll let Carlos add a little bit more color before we you know, really get started here. Um, simple scenarios of you get an email and it, it looks like it is your CEO or your HR lead you know, sending you an update on your business continuity plan. Saying like, oh, hey, we've made some changes, log in here or click on this link to see the new plan. Can you let me know your thoughts? Things like that are being used by malicious uh, attackers all the time to really take advantage of not just a new situation, but the fact that people are using tools that they haven't been using so much before. Again, I fully understand that most of us on this call are quite familiar with a lot of technology like the go-to meeting that we're using right now. But you know, if 40% of people work from home now that didn't do so before, it's often you know the first time they've had to use these technologies. So there's a lot of things that we want to keep uh, focused on. Um, and I very much love what you said. When you implement new technologies and new environments, you're going to cut corners if you do it fast, and that leads to vulnerabilities. And what we're going to talk about today is how can we make sure that we always you know keep track of those vulnerabilities. Uh, Carlos, if you wanted to add anything to that. Sure, and, and I think what we're finding too is that small gaps, I guess in the previous normal, can have a huge impact in the new normal. Uh, example, endpoint. We have one customer who has endpoint technology that's uh, on-prem based. The issue is that they lacked one key component that was internet facing. So they could actually only monitor their endpoints or update their AZ when the VPN is up. So what that means is that Without the VPN, users can also browse the internet in the clear. So anyway, this is one small example where everything seemed to be under control and all of a sudden there's huge changes. The other thing is um, with Zoom, but there's other um, cloud services that are being used. So, and again, they were rushed uh, to get there. So really uh, people need to get a sense of what's their current security posture. So if we're talking about security posture, like what, what do we start with? How do we look at that? Well, I think, uh, you know, Carlos will add some color to that. But, um, you know, if we move forward, we'll, uh, there's really three key areas, three pillars that uh, we always want to make sure that we keep track of. And that is people, process and technology. And especially when we're going to talk about, you know, today we're going to talk about a vulnerability management. Um, these elements, all of these elements, but specifically your process and your technology are going to be very, you know, front and center. But Carlos will share some extra information here. Yeah, and and, and Jasper, I think you 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 mentioned one key point, and uh, we're seeing a lot of, uh, especially with financial fraud. But if you if you focus on the issue here, it's 
it's you got to take care of the people but processes are extremely important like one example is if a person gets uh, an email from the CEO to do um, uh, a financial transfer and they're not sure what to do now the process should be in place that hey you know what the CEO should have the same process we do so they shouldn't be scared about raising the issue to their manager because their job could be at risk so in other words making sure that there is that process and people can be um, I guess comfortable in following it without being at risk Perfect. Um, and, and this, you know, starts to look quite complicated, right? It, it's not as simple as installing that antivirus anymore or, or you know, selling an endpoint. Um, and, and myself personally, as I work with our business partners, uh, a lot of times the questions are, you know, resources are constrained, expertise is, is difficult to find, right? Um, so Carlos, Jasper, thinking about some of the elements that uh, you're mentioning here, uh, how do we start? Well, one of the one of the key things uh, it always starts uh, with analyzing a business risk. It's all about business risk, and specifically, to a certain degree, we're talking about cyber risk. So it's really about understanding where your gaps are and and having that initial assessment, but understanding where your critical gaps are and starting there. Because in 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 the end, there's limited funds, there's limited resources, and that's normal in the business environment. So what's your first priority? So having that roadmap from kind of a risk assessment to see which technology or which service do you need assistance with first. Awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, an additional question um, as we get into that uh, with people, process, and technology, you know, would you mind getting into a little bit more specifics? And actually, uh, while before we get to that, I may put out uh, another poll question to all of our audiences um, and talk a little bit about what challenges they may be having uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, right? So it helps us tailor a little bit of the conversation later um, and get into a bit more detail as Jasper and Carlos jump into some of the questions I just posed earlier. So Carlos, um, as we move on to the next uh, topic of conversation, what is the uh, most basic uh, representation of how a client can secure their environment from a cyber risk standpoint? Well, one of the uh, interesting stats, um, I'm not sure if folks are familiar with the Verizon um, uh, data breach report that happens on a yearly basis. And the latest, and, by, and specifically that one is unique. It's not just a questionnaire. It's actually based on research on actual breaches. Um, what they found is that breaches basically start 86% of the time from um, a user hitting a link and getting fished. So that's a consideration right there as to uh, people are really the, the entry point into the environment and uh, at the highest risk. The other one that they uh, identify is your online application. So uh, whether it be in the cloud, uh, whether it be things like Exchange, but um, having applications that are accessible to hackers on the internet that maybe were quickly put up and maybe not completely secured, and this is the other consideration as well. Perfect. And Jasper, if you wouldn't mind uh, talking us through a little bit more of a deep dive um, as we flash through the slides of some of the primary points. Um, you know, what, what are some of these types of risks that we can start uh, having a conversation about today? Did we have to lose Jasper? He might have lost Jasper. Okay. Um, so Carlos, maybe we'll continue on a little bit of a conversation. We'll go back to a, our previous slide um, and you know have a, a bit of a deeper dive, right? Um, so users, we've got a conversation about training. Um, we have a conversation about uh, ensuring that they understand what the cyber risks are. 
Um, so that, that's a, a very heavy lift, right? Um, corporate sends quite a bit of emails. Um, what are some other things that can typically be done to continuously help uh, users mm -hmm. reinforce the knowledge that they have around cyber risk? Absolutely. So uh, just going through the different services, let's say with train, and again, train is, is about security awareness. And right. you need to train and educate them, right? I mean, that's really the key, but you have to do it um, in a way that uh, one is supported by senior management because you know what, the, you know, looking at videos, reading documents, it takes their time. So you, they want to know for sure that senior management supports that effort. So one of the simple examples as part of the services, yes, you subject them to, uh, to phishing emails, but at their level, uh, you don't want to overwhelm them. And uh, example, send them something that they're going to feel embarrassed uh, one example would be that maybe they get a phishing email to something to do with their employee or the month certificate. So you, you want to do something that's pertinent to is it a new user? Is it somebody who's been in the organization for a while and understands how the process works? Um, again, as I mentioned, it has to be top down. Uh, it can't be something right. that's pushed up. It has to be top down. Um, and and so the targeting of that information, I guess, requires uh, some of the systems and tools as well, right? Primarily on the train, uh, as example, with the, with the uh, ISA service, um, once the program is configured into the system, in other words, um, how often do you want to fish the users? Uh, what kind of training do they specifically need? Um, are they a financially motivated organization or are they somewhere else? In other words, once we have that configured in the system, to the, to, to, the, uh, to, to the business owner, what that means is all they have to worry is online reports that they can actually track progress. So in other words, okay. it's, uh, once set up, it's relatively hands-off. Awesome. Um, and then, you know, quickly to touch on, on the next piece, right, um, endpoints and devices, uh, you know, while it's always been an important conversation in a, a cyber threat uh, landscape, um, I've seen it become a significant conversation in the past six months. Um, you know, what, what has been done or, or what needs to be done from a, a security perspective, especially from, you know, value added resellers, especially from those consultants, uh, trusted advisors, to have that conversation about devices? Well, one of the things that's, that's, um, good from a marketing standpoint is this idea of EDR is important. Uh, and EDR is uh, in detection and response. And one of the key components of that beyond just your standard AV is that it gives you the ability to isolate a potentially compromised server or endpoint. And that's huge. So EDR enables you to, to hunt for that patient zero and to quickly isolate them to reduce the impact to the rest of your business. Um, that is the most important thing. One of the things awesome. is we touch on people of process. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, awesome. No, that's what I was just a quick comment there saying. That's pretty awesome. Hmm. Yeah, now tying back to people, process, and technology, one of the things we find is, um, you know, every wonderful shiny technology you can drop in, but unless you have the expertise Unless you've seen that breach, unless you know how to detect it, how are you going to isolate it? Um, how are you going to recover from it? So it's incredibly important to have the process and the people trained to use that technology uh, rather than just, hey, you know what? We got it in. Check mark. We're getting to go. No, it, it, you, you can't go um, uh, driving on the Indy 500 the first time. You've got to have some practice and you have to have a team behind you. Awesome. Um, and then to the next point, right, uh, hosted monitoring alerts, right, uh, SIME, collecting information. How, how does that really factor into a, a cyber threat uh, conversation? Yeah, so if we go back to the, uh, that uh, Verizon data breach, again, the key point is protecting the user and protecting the online um, components. SIM is absolutely essential, but again, it depends on the business driver. So uh, a lot of this sometimes comes from PCI. Um, example, you wouldn't put a SIM in unless you had endpoint and unless potentially you had a good security posture understanding of where you are. So SIM is a requirement that's basically being driven by something else. 
could be PCI, could be compli uh, compliance, let's say, to privacy. Uh, that's key. The other aspect is your maturity is increased to the point you have some of your basic controls. And now when you want to get a sense of, okay, I need to go further out and I need to, you know, I need to have my logs for a year. I need to have seven by 24 monitoring because I don't have the resources myself. That's where this comes in. The ISA awesome. service, yeah, just to give you an example, the ISA service onboards all your log sources, um, employs uh, use cases to match your business, like what's important to you, and gives you that 724 monitoring. Okay, and I do see Jasper has returned, so I wanted to dive a, a little bit into one of the key conversations that we were going to have today as well, right? Um, which is uh, vulnerability management. Um, what is it? Uh, why do we need it? And, you know, why aren't people talking more about this? <laughs> what? Sure. Let let me uh, you know capture this for people that are new to the concept. And I do apologize for some of the uh, the internet issues, but uh, glad that Carlos was able to uh, keep us going. Um, so vulnerability management um, for people that are com that are very new to security, um, the key thing that vulnerability management allows you to do is continuously scanning your environment, all the IPs in the environment, and see if there's any known vulnerabilities. Um, that are an issue. You can also use it to audit your patch management and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people come to us um, when they want to have a better understanding of what their vulnerabilities are, and um, they will ask us if we can do a penetration test for them, where you know the ISA team will try to break down the walls or the door, if you will, um, of, uh, of a customer's environment. That is not always a good way of spotting what are some of the structural issues or vulnerabilities in a network. So with vulnerability management, instead of trying to break down a door, we are going to take a look in that house, that metaphorical house, and see if all the doors have locks on them and if they are all locked. Um, instead of seeing if, you know, whether or not locks are in place, we can break it down. So these are two different things that sometimes get confused. So with vulnerability management, like I said, um, we offer a service, it's called Radar. We do this in partnership with Tenable. Um, Tenable is the industry leader when it comes to building out the right technology that we need for a service like that. Um, so it's powered by that, delivered by the ISA team here in Canada. And um, again, ongoing scanning of an entire environment and seeing if there are any issues and also how do we progress with fixing those issues. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that is in a nutshell what the, what um, radar is all about. And this is enterpri enterprise grade technology, but, you know, in partnership with Tenable, with Ingram Micro, uh, what we've done in our Infinity program is we've really built out um, a service that can fit an SMB where we have straightforward and flexible pricing available through the Ingram Micro team. Uh, but you still get that powerful support from ISA you know, delivered by a team 24-7, 365 support in Canada um, and all this great technology. But uh, yeah, awesome. we'll go into a little bit more detail later, I'm sure, with the questions as well. For sure. And and I actually wanted to take a, a quick pause to go over our, our poll answers um, just from earlier around some of the key challenges uh, that our audience has been facing today, right? 38% um, have indicated that um, it's difficult to find skilled security talent. Uh, 38% have indicated that uh, they don't have the resources to invest in building a security practice. And 25% uh, has answered uh, there's a shortage in time, right? Um, so sure. all three of these, uh, I think, definitely relate to um, how cybersecurity is today, right? Uh, make, partner, Absolutely. or buy. Um, Absolutely. So, um, um, I just want you know add a couple of things. And these are things that we see all the time, right? I mean, it's... Uh, it's a pretty well documented uh, that um, worldwide, and these are conservative um, numbers, that we are missing over 3 million people worldwide in cybersecurity jobs, um, a, over a quarter of a million alone in North America. Uh, it, is, it is tough, absolutely. And, and that is the reason why you know, we're having this conversation today. Um, if, if we wanna move on, I can share with some of the things that we've seen or some of the asks from customers and and other partners who have joined the Infinity program before. For sure. Yeah, so here's a couple of 
these are very common asks and you know the the common um or sorry the the biggest issues that you know came out of the poll are very aligned with what we've seen from other customers and other other reseller partners that we work with who who, who share with us like well we're getting these questions now i get it it's important uh, all the numbers that we talked about before uh, i know everybody on this call sees these as well but it it's challenging to find the right staff to make the investment have that additional investment at this point where you know it's been a critical time for everyone um and then there's additional questions that come with the whole concept of adding a new practice to your to your business um sherman you mentioned it before a lot of us on the call have helped our customers setting up in a new environment making sure that our customers can survive this pandemic um and then the question then happens always it's like okay we we, we rushed, we got every available laptop through Ingram Micro in March and, and April. I'm sure that one, Sherman probably doesn't want to remind himself about those few months when, you know, every laptop available was being sold and shipped and what have you. Okay, we did all that, but are we sure that we didn't cut those cor corners? And not everybody is a security specialist. So, um, you know, this is an ideal uh, case study for, uh, you know, the radar service. Um, We've had this particular um, conversation with one of our partners who had a customer uh, out in British Columbia, uh, a law firm. Um, I won't go into many details, but it was exactly that, where they came to ISA and looking at services like Radar, were like, hey, we need to really audit whether or not we did a good job and whether or not our customers set up for success. So that is one thing that we definitely see. Another piece is, you know, when you talk about security and making sure that, um, uh, our customers can be successful. What are, you know, how can we find out what are the vulnerabilities, but also, you know, what does liability mean? Um, can I make sure that I'm using industry best practice, which again, can be a challenge if you're you're not a specialist. Um, I'll, I'll share an example of a customer that had questions or uh, one of our infinity resellers that had a question about, well, my customer won this big contract, but in order to, um, execute that contract, they have to show that they're compliant with NIST 800-177, uh, which is an industry standard. And um, obviously the question came like uh, came to us, what is that and how do we measure that? You know, can, can radar show us, you know, on, on this periodic base, um, you know, if we are meeting these standards? So those are all good opening conversations to have. Um, and then uh, finally, it's that point where Carlos mentioned it before as well, not just with Radar, but with all of our hosted services that we provide. We have the Canadian teams that work around the clock in shifts 24-7, 365 every day of the year. Um, you know, we've had, we've had uh, some of our partners who tried other services where, well, there's an issue with the service and it turns out, well, it was switched off, whether it was by accident or what have you. Um, and because something was switched off, we didn't notice it and something happened wrong. So these are obviously all good reasons uh, to think about, okay, maybe hosted services that can provide that ongoing, um, you know, monitoring, as Carlos said earlier, uh, to make sure that these kinds of issues don't happen going forward. Um, but uh, yeah, if Sherman, I think that we've captured some of those key issue and pain points on the next slide as well, where um, you know, in Canada, we've seen 65% of attacks issues being geared towards the SMB. Um, the saying of "I am too small to be a target" that doesn't that's not that's not valid anymore. It hasn't been valid for quite some time. And even sometimes, you know, I'm sure that we all remember from what, seven years ago, um, the big target. Uh, attack uh, from the chain it happened the same year that Target tried to start operations in Canada. It was not the most successful year for that uh, uh, grocery store chain. Um, but they had a big breach and that breach actually happened. I'm not going into many details, but if you remember a small um, uh, shop, electrician shop in the Seattle area that came in to replace some air conditioning units and they were given um, administrator accounts to check whether or not everything worked properly. Target had every possible cybersecurity practice that you can imagine, um, but that small SMB to which they gave the keys of the kingdom did not. And so, yeah, that SMB might've thought up front, like I'm too small to be a target. Well, excuse the pun, but uh, you know, in the case of the target hack, you know, that's how they got in by the back door or via the back door. So 
Um, nobody's too small to be uh, be uh, targeted, and Canada is no exception. And it makes sense. Canada is an SMB economy to begin with. Uh, we've it was represented. I think it was the number one choice here, um, or the number the, the two top picks are uh, reflected on this website on this slide here. It's very costly to start a new practice if your core business is providing different services. To build out your own cybersecurity service can be challenging. And even if you had those resources, um, there's a massive shortage of that staff. And that's that's why we're here to help, because maybe we can be that extension of your technical team that delivers services to your customers uh, when you need us to. Awesome. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you, Carlos. Um, I'm also going to remind the audience uh, to utilize the questions tab uh, to send in some additional questions uh, to Jasper and Carlos around this topic. Um, both audience participation is greatly appreciated and uh, potentially handsomely rewarded. So, um, you know, if anybody has an active question right now, please feel free to <laughs> feel free to throw it in. Um, you know, while, while we get to that, uh, there definitely have been uh, some questions around here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start uh, with a little bit of what we have today. Um, if we understand correctly, uh, Radar will tell my users what issues there are and how significant they are. Um, but does it actually fix the issues? Okay, that's a great question. Um, and I'll also let Carlos you know, talk uh, to, to some of that. Um, so that understanding is, is, is correct. So, and this is definitely where the opportunity for, for uh, everybody on this call really exists. So um, the idea is that radar scans your environment, uh, shows you always the current um, uh, report, if you will, of where uh, the key vulnerabilities lie and what their significance is. Um, you know, ISA will help you prioritize those for, with your end customers. Now there are, are always, simple things that can be easy fixes, but the idea is that we can then help you plan out what services you can add on to your customer uh, for your customer to help them with that remediation of that. Now, like I said, some of the issues will be easily solved by ISA services, not just radar, but some of the ones that Carlos also touched on, on building a holistic strategy. At the end of the day, there's no one silver bullet for cybersecurity. There's not one technology that you, or service that you get and you are completely covered for everything. The goal of radar is to show where the key issues are and what industry best practice is to do about that. And then depending on what the comfort level is of everybody on this call, we can work with you to make that happen. We can do that on your behalf if you prefer so, or if you're building out your own practice, we can you know, um, help you understand where to prioritize. Carlos, is there anything that I missed there? Yeah, just, just add a little more color to the prioritization. I think that's, one of the key things that uh, Tenable has, uh, has led in, and that's the <clears throat> so what. In other words, you're going to get a list of vulnerabilities, or CVEs as they call them, and the question then becomes, okay, so I have a thousand of these. I only have so much time. How am I going to patch these? And the reality is what these folks have done is, and I, I give you some stats from a recent RSA conference presentation, they're saying, on average, only 10% of these vulnerabilities are patched by any organization. 10%. That's, that's a pretty small number. The other interesting fact or statistic is that 2.5% 2, 2 of these CVEs are actually exploited. So the bad guys are only using 2.5% of these CVEs. So if you take that in perspective, your first question is going to be, Okay, hold on a second. So if I got limited resources, limited time, I want to focus on these. So what Tenable gives you, and part of the reports that we provide in Radar, is this risk context. So understanding your critical assets, which should be part of where you get your, your business continuity disaster recovery plan. So you know what your critical assets are, but now the vulnerabilities are actually correlated with, hey, is there an exploit available, and are these exploits actually being used or attacked? So the key point here then is we prioritize based on what matters most, which is your critical assets and what the bad guys are doing. I hope that helps to reduce the thousand, maybe to a hundred that you have to do. Yeah, awesome. just to recap that question and just to make sure that it was 100% clear, um, radar for those partners here or for those um, uh, companies that are on the call that are offering these kinds of you know, break fix services to their clients, 
radar is a provides a fantastic upsell opportunity for those partners who are absolutely not in this space but want to offer or have the option to offer cybersecurity services you can work with isa to also take care of, of the remediation but you know we're not here to do a one you know, it, this is not a black or white uh, conversation. And when you partner with ISA, you don't have to position all of our services that we have to do. We work with you to make sure that this fits your business model and we can help you, we can complement you. So, yeah. And there's actually a, a, an add-on question to this as well, right? Um, what type of assets can be scanned with radar? I mean, when we talk assets, there's a lot, right? So to that point, so, one is what type of assets and where are they, right? Um, so considering that typically you have assets um, on-prem, so your servers, your endpoints, your Macs, uh, Linux, Windows, all of those, and you also have um, those assets, of course, in the internet. So you also need to scan the internet-based assets. Additionally, as of course everybody's working from home, you also want to scan the endpoints. Now, as you can imagine, you can't scan directly into, um, you know, through a firewall to, to a, a machine that's sitting at home. So that's where the solution also has agents. So the agents will actually scan the remote workstations as they are. So it's both the endpoints, the type of endpoints, and the location. So uh, depending on where, what kind of endpoints we have, so whether it be from all of the operating systems we mentioned, we can cover all of those. No. And maybe, um, I don't know if this is already listed as a question, but I think it's a bit of an add-on point to that. So we provide this service through our partners, you know, completely re virtual and remote. Um, and um, there is going to be a little, a, a limited amount of, of uh, interaction required by our technical teams um, and you, the partner, and also the end customer to make sure that in case that you can't speak for everything of your end customer, to, just to make sure that we've got the right firewall policies in place and that we have, you know, the right IP information for the scanning to work. Um, but we limit it to that, right? So um, the goal really here is um, ISA can be that extension of your technical delivery team. We're not here to, you know, engage your customer in a different way. So uh, it's your customer, you are uh, their trusted advisor. We work with you to make sure that you can offer the services to your customer. I hope that makes sense. And uh, Jasper, I think this one's directed completely to you. Um, <laughs> is there a partner program or portal uh, for ISA? And how do we get more information about selling radar um, and partnering with ISA? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. So uh, we, we definitely do have that partner program. Uh, uh, the, the program is the Infinity program. It is, um, uh, you know, we work heavily with the Ingram micro team. So at the, I think the very final slide will have some uh, contact information. I can reach out and you can reach out either straight to ISA or through the Ingram micro cybersecurity team as well. In the program, um, we are actually, so we're doing a bit of a revamp of our website right now. And uh, so, there, there will be more self-service uh, materials available, um, you know, uh, via via the website. But um, right now, um, there absolutely are trainings and and assets that are part of this program. Um, so uh, we don't expect you to, after this call, feel like, okay, now I'm going to talk to all my customers about uh, this particular service. Uh, if you're interested in joining the par the partner program, um, which is straightforward program and there's you know two pro, uh, partnership levels and you know there's discount levels associated with those and what have you very straightforward um, you can just reach out to infinity at uh, isacybersecurity.com or you can reach out to myself or to sherman uh, again all that uh, contact information will come and uh, we will onboard you into the program um, and uh, uh, there are absolutely all these uh, available assets. So we've got marketing and sales enablement um, uh, tools available for you. But the first thing that we do uh, when you are interested in joining the program is we'll take the time to have a conversation with you, listen to you and um, you know, answer any question you might have from a sales and from a technical perspective. Again, I, I'm, I'm gonna reiterate, reiterate this all the services that we provide that you can resell through this program, you don't have to worry about the technical delivery piece that is all done by ISA. 
that being said, I totally understand that you want to learn more about the ins and outs of the service. So we'll answer all those questions in your onboarding into the program. I hope that answered the awesome. question. Awesome. And then, uh, Jasper, actually, there was a, a continuation there. Um, how long has ISA been in business? Um, and then I'm going to tag on even another one. Um, is radar scanning available as agentless? So um, we've, uh, ISA has been in business in 1992. So we are close to uh, uh, celebrating our 30th anniversary. Um, and uh, we, you know, we've been providing um, managed and hosted services. I think we started building out our managed services about six, seven years ago now. Um, and uh, in order to do so, uh, we have ops we have invested over the years into the facility, the, uh, the technologies and the people that we need for that. So right now we have two, um, we could describe them as, as security operation centers. Uh, we have some slightly different branding, but I'm not gonna go into that that detail right now, where we have teams working in eight-hour shifts that are specialists in uh, all these fields. Um, and then when it comes to different flavors of, um, of, of the service of radar, so um, radar as it is off the shelf through Ingram Micro is um, created for the SMB to be as, as light as possible. Um, and in some cases, that means that we've restricted customization of that. However, that being said, um, we are always open to the conversation because we do provide to enterprise customers much more um, uh, custom solutions, if you will. Uh, we always have the option um, in, in working with you and building out something that makes more sense. And I'll let Carlos also talk about technology for a little bit. Um, but those will not be the ones that you will see off the shelf at Ingram Micro. That doesn't mean that we can't transact that through Ingram Micro. You can always rely on buying um, uh, ISA services through Ingram Micro. But what is going to be off the shelf available and for what we have all the marketing and sales uh, tools available, that's going to be a little bit more restricted. Carlos, is there a, um, I know there was, there was a technical conversation, a question about the agent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we want to be as, um, I guess, less, least impacting as possible. So the, uh, the typical scanner is a network scanner. So you deploy that in the VM. And so there is no hardware involved. Uh, second, as you know, we can scan without credentials, but um, uh, for those who know, uh, then uh, absolutely we support credential scans. And for those who don't, credential scans really get into the system and get you a lot of the information. So we support that. And if for some reason customers go into cloud, um, one of the things about scanning is you can't scan what's not there, right? Um, somebody puts up a server, they're in a hurry, they leave it, and it never gets patched, right? Um, in the cloud, there's something in the cloud, you know, it's pretty complicated, especially Azure, AWS. Um, how do you know the assets are still there? So when we talk about vulnerability scanning, we're giving you two services. One is the discovery part, and the other is the scanning part. So again, to answer the question specifically, absolutely, network scanners are available, and that's the default. All right. Awesome. Uh, a couple of more questions. Um, okay. Customer support. Is it 24-7? Yeah. Yeah, so we have, um, we have uh, people in our facilities, um, although some are obviously uh, have been remote in the last few months, but uh, uh, we do have several facilities, and um, those facilities, so the large facility that we have uh, right here in Toronto, where I'm calling everybody from, uh, is Matt 24-7. Uh, and uh, uh, people rotate, obviously, in shifts. Uh, so we have always that... Uh, that possibility to support no matter what time. Um, also in Canada, uh, with Canadian eyes on glass, we provide Canadian data residency for our services, uh, which is an important piece uh, to the ISA uh, puzzle. And um, um, again, when we sign up, um, you know, uh, customers for this service, one thing that we will spend a good amount of time on with you, especially as you're getting started, is to understand you know, what does the communication look like? Because again, we have a lot of different people on this call and there are people on this call that aren't just a service provider or a reseller to your end customer. Some of you act as the complete IT department of your customer. 
And then there are other people on this call that are a lot more from a consulting perspective. So we 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 don't we won't force one way uh, to work with us uh, uh, through you. We will work with you to understand if there is an issue, if there is a reason for ISA to reach out proactively to the end customer. How would that work best for this customer with you as a reseller? Because some of you might be working at 2 a.m. on an issue for your customer, and some of you might, you know, have very limited touch points with them. So in some cases it makes sense to reach out to you. In some cases, you will tell us to reach out to a technical leader at the uh, at the customer, for example. Thank you, thank you. Um, and we have about time for two more questions, so I'm going to combine one, uh, really asking Carlos, um, how about scanning of web applications and cloud applications? Um, how does that work? Right. So as far as um, web applications, the, the solution, I, it's on the roadmap, but the solution does support uh, web application scanning, so that is something we're going to make available. And as far as cloud scanning, again, there's different variations what that means. So if you have applications, um, let's say in Azure or AWS, and there, it's a web application, again, that's, that's a standard web application. If you're talking about scanning the, let's say, AWS or Azure infrastructure, then yes, that is supported as well. Uh, the CIS level of control, if you're familiar with those, uh, those will be automatically uh, or it can be set up to automatically scan the infrastructure as well. Perfect. And is there a way that we can potentially see a sample output of a radar scan report um, as part of the follow-up? So, uh, yeah, we um, uh, there is some information already captured in the, you know, a little bit more generic and high level, um, you know, uh, battle cards of the service and, and some uh, FAQ documents and what have you. Uh, but uh, we will be following up with you to, to, you know, share more information and especially if you're interested in joining the program and we can uh, go into, you know, detail with you on that for sure. Perfect. Uh, I did want to take a, a few minutes just to do a quick recap for our audience. Thank you very much for all the questions. Uh, we will be reaching out uh, for your rewards and uh, treats for being a uh, question askers. Um, and so, you know, Jasper, throwing it back to you, uh, just to wrap up today, right? So we had a, a great conversation about a, a lot of security threats, um, especially in a, a digitally transformed age. Um, and, and one of the big questions is, you know, view. Um, you know, how do I manage that? How do I ensure that my environment uh, has minimized its vulnerabilities, right? Um, how, how, you know, how do we start working with ISA is probably one of the, the bigger questions that we yeah. want to uh, talk about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, well, I'll tackle that first before we do the final, you know, recap bullet points. So um, to confirm the ISA team, but also the Ingram Micro team, uh, we're working very closely uh, together, are here to support you. So if you have questions about the program and how to join, um, and you can, you can go today to our website, isacybersecurity.com, and just you know click the button to apply. Uh, it's as it's as easy as that. But you can also just tell Sherman. You're gonna call Sherman, text him, um, spam Sherman completely. Um, uh, you you will have my contacts as well. You can just reach out to somebody at ISA or Ingram Micro, or like I said, we have the automated process as well via the website. Um, what you should expect from that is that we're going to follow up with you and just have a conversation, make sure that we answer any question you might have. Uh, if you need to have that, we'll uh, organize a more technical conversation for your technical teams so that you feel comfortable, um, you know, what's, uh, what's happening with these services, what's under the hood, so that you feel comfortable positioning these services to your end customers. From a sales enablement perspective and a marketing perspective, we will have a lot of assets available to you and uh, we will have um, on-demand trainings for you and also uh, live trainings as well. If you need, uh, if you have, if you have a large sales force that's scattered over Canada, and you want us to uh, set up a session very much like today, but much more focused on sales scenarios, we'll do that. We're happy to do that. We do that with partners all the time. Um, so that's how to reach out with us. Um, and then, like I said, everything that ISA has as available, we have over 40 different security services available, um, we can always transact uh, uh, with the help of Ingram Micro. Uh, if you like to just, if you're set up as an Ingram Micro partner, that might be the easiest thing to do. 
Um, recap radar. Radar is extremely relevant today because everybody's been set up to, you know, uh, survive the lockdown. And, uh, you know, we're getting started with a second wave now. We don't know how long it's going to last, but you all remember from the first few slides that the vast majority of our customers expect to uh, to have these changes to be either permanent or at least semi-permanent. So it's important that we've set up all these new environments that we that we understand where are the known vulnerabilities, how is how are things progressing, how is my patch management uh, going. Um, so, um, so that's where Radar can absolutely help you. It's supported by by a Canadian team, 24/7, uh, 365, um, and through Ingram Micro. If if you uh, are extreme, if you are happy with uh, the standard version, which is made for SMBs, um, then you can just order this off the shelf by Ingram Micro today. And um, it, it, the service is priced per IPs that need to be scanned in the environment, and depending on the commitment that the uh, uh, the customer makes, whether it's a one or a three year commitment, uh, that pricing will uh, be reflected and it's straightforward monthly payments uh, that we uh, look for. So it's a subscription service, but with annual commitments um, that are built on a monthly basis, just to make that very clear, not asking you to uh, pay a lot or your customers to pay a lot uh, upfront on an annual basis. This, these are monthly built services. And then finally, I can't stress it enough, uh, there's a there's there's more than one player in this market, but there's one player that and uh, you know is always uh, year over year you know coming out on top as um, the most advanced technology uh, that is available, and that is Tenable. And so we've chosen Tenable for you know the key elements of the service. The service brings a lot more than just the technology, and we work very closely with Tenable. Uh, we are a very strategic partner of Tenable. I do believe we have some people of Tenable on the call today as well. Um, and so we're very happy with that technology that Carlos team, Carlos's teams can uh, can bring to life for your end customers. Um, on the next slide, I'm not going to go into that. You'll just there are people that are really new to security on this call, and there are people that are really new to selling, um, you know, security as a service. We have specific assets. This is just a snip from that, but we have specific assets in this program uh, to help you get started. What are those conversation starters? Um, we have assets also on, you know, starting to sell security operations center services more broadly, um, some objection handlers, stuff like that. Um, we get it. Um, we know your customers are being targeted and we're here to help you to be an extension of your team. Carlos, did I miss anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I think one of the key things is that, um, you know, there's a lot of services out there there's a lot of partners, but I think one of the things we focus on is that uh, we're going to be there for you after the service gets sold. That's my primary responsibility is to take care of you. We know that there's going to be anomalies for whatever reason, and I just want to make sure that I'm there to represent you in the service delivery team after the services get sold. There we go. Perfect. And just to wrap it up, how do you find us? <laughs> Um, there so there, there are two avenues uh, of uh, reaching out, and you can definitely talk uh, directly with the ISA team or the Ingram Micro team. Um, you know, just as a, a quick reminder to everybody, we are definitely sending out the recorded version of the um, uh, Q and A and uh, the whole presentation today. Uh, please reach out to us if you needed some additional information, things that you wanted to utilize, um, and we can get you uh, the information you need. And with that, uh, I really wanted to thank both Carlos and Jasper uh, for taking the time, and I really wanted to thank our audience um, for investing the time with us today. Uh, it's incredibly busy, uh, especially since uh, COVID. Um, you know, more digital interactions, more everything uh, from a day to day and uh, you taking the time out uh, to talk to us through some of these challenges and the solutions is much appreciated. Um, if you do have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, a follow-up email will be sent um, and all of our contact information will be available. Um, thank you very much for participating. Carlos, Jasper, uh, we'll talk to you again very soon. Oh, thank you for everybody joining us uh, all across Canada. Uh, amazing to see so many people um, responding. We've had a record attendance today. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take care, everybody.